hi, we're out on our range today. And once again, no, you haven't won a prize. That's a scam. Also, before we go any farther, in case you missed the previous update, you'll see this crutch. Yeah, recently I broke my hip. Don't ask. Okay, a lot of people have asked me about using Caliber 45 Colt for concealed carry. And the first thing I want to say about that is that some people will call it 45 Long Colt. I have six different types of ammunition here. Everyone is labeled on the box 45 Colt. So that's what I'm going to call it. And the types of ammunition we're going to be testing today will be Ammo Incorporated, 45 Colt, 250 grain jack and hollow point. Spear Gold Dot, 45 Colt, 250 grain gold dot hollow point. Hornady Lever Revolution, 45 Colt, 225 grain FTX projectile. Winchester Silver Tip, 45 Colt, 225 grain jacketed hollow point. Remington High Terminal Performance Copper, which is 45 Colt, 200 grain XPB hollow point, and Hornady Critical Defense 45 Colt 185 grain FTX projectile. So we'll shoot these side by side, we'll use the chronograph, we'll go to the target, we'll shoot our meat target, and we'll see how they compare and what kind of performance we get out of them. And let's start by seeing what kind of groups I can get in our test gun, which will be my Ruger Vaccaro 45 Colt with a five and a half inch barrel. So let's go to the target. And we have our Dirty Bird reactionary target set up, and we'll start with an oldie but a goodie, the Winchester Silver Tip, 45 Colt, 225 grain jacket at hollow point. And I'll shoot this from a distance of 20 yards, and my aiming point will be the center of the target. I fired six shots from 20 yards, and of course this is me shooting offhand, and we see that although the group will fit under my hand, it's still what I'd call a mediocre group. And it's perhaps just a little to the left. So let's put up a new Dirty Bird reactionary target and try a different type of ammo. And now I'll shoot from 20 yards with our Spear Gold Dot with its 250 grain Gold Dot hollow point. Now, when we look at the group with the Spear Gold Dot, the first thing we notice is a much better group. That not only fits under my hand, that would fit under a much smaller hand. In fact, I think I can get it all under one fist. However, a much better group doesn't help you much when it's that far from the point of aim. And what we really see here is that different ammunition and different guns can hit in different places. But the main thing we can take from this is, at least with my Ruger Vaccaro, the Spear Gold Dot does hold a good group. Let's try another type of ammo. And now we'll try our ammo incorporated ammunition with its 250 grain jacket at hollow point. With our ammo incorporated ammunition, you may notice I only fired five shots. When I saw that this was the group we were getting, the sixth wasn't necessary. And we see a very good group, and the group's pretty much in the same place as what we got with the Spear Gold Dot ammunition. So what we see here is, you have to find an ammunition that hits where your non-adjustable sights are aligned. And when you're talking about revolvers in caliber 45 Colt, a lot of them have adjustable sights, but a lot of them do not. So part of this process, finding something that'll hold a good group and finding something that will hit where I'm aiming. Let's try another type of ammo. 
And now we'll try our Lever Evolution with its 225 grain projectile. And with our lever evolution ammunition, we see a significant shift in our point of impact and a good group. Let's try another type of ammo. Now let's try our Remington HTP ammunition with its 200 grain XPB hollow point. Now with the Remington ammunition we see a group that's not as good, but still not too bad, and it's really not that far off of our point of aim. And I am shooting 20 yards, so a lot of people would say being that far off at 20 yards is still okay. A lot of people would say that I wouldn't. Let's try one more type of ammo. Now let's try our Hornady Critical Defense ammunition, and this is a 185 grain projectile. Let's see what kind of group I can get with this. Now when we look at the group with our Hornady Critical Defense Ammunition, first, this one down here really was just me. Second, we see a group that's what I'd call mediocre, and my aiming point's about here, so it's really not that far off. Okay, one more type of ammunition. Federal American Eagle 45 Colt 225 grain jacketed soft point. Let's see what kind of group I can get with this. Now this is a mediocre group, however I have to say, now that I've been standing up this long, these flyers have a lot more to do with me than the ammunition. And the reason I wanted to demonstrate the Federal American Eagle is because I knew a lot of people would ask, what type of 45 cold ammo am I using in my Vaquero? And this is what I use. Not that it's a stellar ammunition, it is pretty good but not stellar, but it's the only commercially available 45 cold ammunition that I can find that hits pretty close to my point of aim with both of my Vaqueros. So is it the right ammunition for you? I don't know, but it is the right ammunition for me and my guns. Now let's chronograph our 45 cold ammunitions. And of course, anytime we're going to chronograph 45 cold, we have to start with 45 ACP. The question will come up, how does 45 Colt compare in terms of power with 45 ACP? And it can be a difficult comparison to make because getting truly comparable guns and ammo is difficult to do. Well, what I have is 45 ACP Hornady Critical Defense 185 grain FTX projectile. And we'll compare that to 45 Colt Hornady Critical Defense 185 grain FTX projectile. And to have my Rock Island Armory 1911 platform with a 5 inch barrel, and we'll compare that to the Ruger Vaquero with a 5.5 inch barrel. And that's going to be about as close to a fair comparison as I can make it. So let's start with 45 ACP. Mm. 
992. A thousand and two. Nine ninety three. Nine seventy seven. And nine eighty one. Now let's see how that compares to the forty five Colt. And now forty five Colt, Hornady Critical Defense, one hundred and eighty five grain FDX projectile. A thousand eighty one. A thousand sixty nine. A thousand seventy eight. A thousand fifty six. A thousand ninety four. Now let's go crunch those numbers. Well, I crunched the numbers, and of course it comes with the caveat that chronographs don't always agree with each other, and certain environmental factors like ambient temperature and elevation can affect chronograph results. It also comes with the caveat that in the past, when I have chronographed your typical target ammunitions, like 45 ACP, 230 grain ball, versus 45 Colt, 250 grain round nose lead, I found that the 45 ACP will give you greater velocity, and even when you take into account the heavier bullet of the Colt, the 45 ACP is still a little more powerful. However, in this particular case, with our Hornady Critical Defense Ammunition, with the 45 ACP, I got a mean velocity of 989 feet per second. With the 45 Colt, 1,075. That's 86 feet per second more. That is a significantly greater amount. And so it would appear that when you can make a pretty much fair comparison, and you're talking about premium ammunitions, 45 Colt looks like it will be very comparable, maybe even a little more powerful than 45 ACP. Okay, that having been said, let's chronograph some more ammunition types. Now let's try our Spear Gold Dot with its 250 grain Gold Dot hollow point. Six ninety seven seven oh five seven oh four seven eleven and seven fifteen. Let's try another type of ammo. Now let's try our ammo incorporated 250 grain jacket at hollow point. 748. 768. 743, 741, 757. Let's try another type of ammo. And now our Remington 200 grain XPB hollow point. 936 937 891 895 907 and 922. Now let's try another type of ammo. And now our Hornady Lever Evolution with its 225 grain FTX projectile. 
911. Eight ninety one. Nine oh eight. Nine twenty seven. And nine thirty. Okay, one more type of ammo. And finally, Winchester Silver Tip with its 225 grain Silver Tip Hollow Point. Seven hundred. Seven seventy six. Eight thirty four. Eight oh nine. Seven ninety two. And seven fifty three. Those were some inconsistent readings. I'm going to reload a couple more rounds, see if we can get any better data. You got to bear with the awkwardness of me loading from the box while trying to balance on one leg. Seven thirty-eight, eight oh five, seven ninety-five, and seven seventy-five. You know that's really inconsistent. We'll come up with a mean average, but that inconsistency might have a little bit to do with why this particular ammo seemed to be the least accurate of all of them. Anyway, let's go crunch the numbers. Well, I crunched the numbers and normally I'll stand next to the chart and list off all the numbers that we crunched, but people have said that they're having difficulty seeing those numbers, so they'd like to see the chart a lot closer and not see me, so let's do that. Here's our types of ammunition, our velocities, and we computed the energy foot-pounds. Now we see our Hornady Critical Defense, as we mentioned earlier, has a velocity of 1,075. That's way ahead of any of the rest, but remember it's a 185 grain bullet, not a 250 or a 225 or a 200. So our Spear Gold Dot only gives us 706, but remember that's a 250 grain bullet. Ammo Incorporated also a 250 grain bullet at 751, the Remington a 200 grain bullet at 914, Winchester Silver Tip 225 grain bullet at 777, and the Lever Evolution 225 grain bullet at 913, way ahead of Winchester Silver Tips 777. Now, if we come over here to our energy foot pounds, where we have to take into account projectile weight and velocity, we see that our heavier bullets, like the Spear Gold Dot with 250 grain, is only 276 energy foot pounds. Ammo Incorporated, only 313. Those aren't really impressive. Lever Evolution with a high velocity and a 225 grain bullet, 416 energy foot-pounds, not bad. But our clear winner is Hornady Critical Defense at 474. Even though it's only a 185 grain bullet, the very high velocity will give us more energy foot-pounds. But as I've said so many times in the past, all of those numbers are just numbers on a piece of paper. How will they translate into effectiveness on the intended target? Let's see if we can put that to the test. 
To test the effectiveness of our ammunition, we're going to use the meat target. Now, for those who haven't seen it before, the meat target is leather couch skin, followed by pork steak, pack rolls, pork ribs, a bag of oranges to simulate lung tissue, more pork ribs on the back, four layers of t-shirt on the front, four layers on the back, and the whole thing followed by the new and improved high-tech fleece bullet stop. And I'll use my Ruger Vaquero with its five and a half inch barrel, and I'll shoot the meat target from seven yards, and I'm going to shoot it with two different types of our 45 cold ammunition. The Remington ammo with its 200 grain all copper hollow point, and the Spear Gold Dot ammunition with its 250 grain gold dot hollow point. Let's see what kind of damage I can do and what kind of penetration we get. Well, I've got the meat target taken apart. And we have just 45 caliber holes in the ribs on the front of the target. We have some pretty good damage to our orange lung tissue, but based on where I shot the target, I can tell that the Remington ammunition did significantly more damage to our orange lung tissue than the Spear Gold Dot ammunition did. And if we look at our ribs on the back of the target, we can see a couple of 45 caliber holes, and we can also see much bigger holes where the Remington ammunition just did more damage. Why is that? Let's take a close-up look at the projectiles. And here's our six projectiles, the Remington's on your left, the Spear on your right, and you can see with the Remington's two very good expansion, one mediocre, and with the Spear Gold Dot, two mediocre expansion with one, eh, whatever you'd call one step ahead of mediocre, maybe mediocre plus. So we can see the Remington ammunition just performed well. And all of these projectiles were stopped by the t-shirt on the back of the target or by the first layer of fleece. Now we have a new meat target set up, and I'll shoot this from seven yards with Hornady Critical Defense Ammunition with its 185 grain FTX projectile. Now on paper, the Hornady Critical Defense seemed to be the clear winner. Let's see how well it does on the target. Here's the ribs on the front of the target, and they have some nice big holes in them. These projectiles are already expanding as they go through these ribs. We not only see big holes, but where the projectiles hit ribs, shattered them. We also see just some mangled orange lung tissue. The amount of damage to this orange lung tissue is significantly more from the four shots of this than it was from the six shots of the previous test. Now the ribs on the back of the target, by now the projectiles are really slowing down and we see not a whole lot of tissue damage, just holes in there, but still, where projectiles hit ribs, shattered them. But the real thing is, let's take a close-up look at these projectiles. All of these projectiles were stopped by the first layer of fleece. You can see this one lost its jacket, but only when I pulled it out of the fleece, the jacket was still there with it. And they all have very good expansion. So the takeaways from all of this. Well, first, in shooting spear gold dot ammunition with its gold dot hollow point, in my experience, I've found that Spear Gold Dot is really good ammo in conventional calibers like 9x19 and 40 Smith & Wesson. But again, in my experience, when I've used that ammunition for more obscure calibers like 25 ACP, 44 Special, and now 45 Colt, the ammunition has performed quite poorly. Another thing we see here is that when you look at that ballistics chart, not all 45 Colt ammo is created equal, caveat emptor. However, a lot of these are producing ballistics far ahead of your old school 250 grain round nose lead projectile. And so you have to be really careful about which guns you use when using some of these more powerful modern ammunitions. All of these are of course perfectly safe in Vaqueros, but if you're talking about original Colt single action armies that were made especially back in the black powder days, you'd want to really put a lot of thought into that before you put any of these ammunitions into some of those old guns. Now, as far as the ammunitions we tested today, it was easy to see that the Remington ammo was pretty good and the Horneted Critical Defense was the clear winner. It held good groups on the target. It performed excellently in our meat target. Now, it brings up the question, who would use a 45 Colt revolver for concealed carry personal protection home defense? And the answer is, the people who would use that are people who just think that single action revolvers are cool. Or maybe they're the kind of people who like to do cowboy action shooting, but don't have the money to buy all kinds of different guns for different circumstances. So they have the cowboy action gun and it becomes their self-defense gun. So you go to the range, shoot your cowboy action loads, which are loaded down kind of things, and then load with the Hornady Critical Defense for the trip home. Sure, a lot of people would be in that kind of category. 
you just have to remember if you're going to use carry ammo that's different than your practice ammo, you have to have carry ammo that hits in the same place that your very typically non-adjustable sights are aligned. And you might have to go through a few different types of ammo before you find the right one for you. Now, which is the right one for me? I'm going to stick with the Federal American Eagle because that's what hits pretty close to where my non-adjustable sights on both guns are aligned. But if I were to have a 45 Colt that had adjustable sights so I could make just about any ammunition work, yeah, Hornady Critical Defense would be the right ammo for me. So, one more thing I have to add. When I film things like this, I'm often by myself or I have one or two people helping me. Presently, I'm needing quite a bit of help. So, to the rather large group of people that helped me put this together, thank you. And thanks for watching.